In this video, I will show you how to consume a web API from a Blazor WebAssembly app. We will build an app that consumes data from an API hosted on Rapid API. In case you don't know, Rapid API is a marketplace where you can find a lot of public APIs that you can use in your application. Let's start by creating the project in Visual Studio. I choose the template Blazor WebAssembly. I give a name to my project. In the next screen, I leave the default options. And finally, I click on the Create button to generate the project. Once the project has been generated, it's always a good idea to launch the application to see if any errors occurred during the generation process. You can see on the screen that everything went well. I have a web application. I'm going to create a new folder at the root of my project. I call it news. This folder will contain all the files we will create during this video. I'm going to start by adding a model. I create a new class. I call it news item. This class represents the data that will be displayed on the screen. We need some properties like the headline, then the content of the news. The type of this property is markup string. As I expect to have HTML in this, this type is more appropriate. Finally, we will need an image URL property, which will be used to display an image. That's it for the model. Let's create a service for fetching the data from the API. I begin by adding an interface. In this one, I add a method that returns a list of news. I call it get news. Now we have to create the implementation. I had a new class named news service. If you want to make calls to the API, we need to use the HTTP client class. If you look in the file program.cs, you can see that the class has already been registered with the dependency injection container. So, in the constructor, I declare HTTP client as a parameter so it can be injected by the dependency injection container. If we want to execute request to the Rapid API, we need some information. In my Rapid API account, I have registered to an API called Investing Cryptocurrency Market. And these are the parameters I need in order to make requests. I declare some variables in the service which will allow me to store these parameters. The first one is the base URL. You can see in the program.cs that there is already a base URL configured on the HTTP client. We will replace it. Then we need the address of the handpoint that will help retrieve the news. We also need a parameter called host, which must go in the header of the request. Finally, we need the security key to call the API. Usually it's better to store these settings in a configuration file, but for the ease of this tutorial, we will leave them right there. I will copy the Rapid API settings and come right back. Here are the settings. Now I want to configure the HTTP client. I start with the base address, then the headers, first the host header, and next the API key. The HTTP client is configured. Now we are going to execute the request. 
I invoke the get async method because it's a get request. And I provide the address of my endpoint. Once I get a response, I can invoke the ensure success status code. This method makes sure that the request has been executed successfully. Otherwise, this method will throw an exception. So there are different ways to read a response. I prefer to read it as a stream because it's faster. Once I have a stream, the goal is to deserialize it into a C-sharp object. In Rapid API, I have an example of a response to the request. So I'm going to get this example here and paste it into my code editor. And the goal is to turn this JSON into a C-sharp object. To do so, I copy the entire JSON. Then I go back in my project. So I add a new class. I call it news DTO. DTO means data transfer object. So in the Visual Studio menu, in edit, then paste special, I select paste JSON as classes. And that's it. I have C sharp classes for my JSON. So I need to replace the root object with news DTO. Now we can have an object in which we can deserialize the data. Next, I need to transform this object into a list of news item. So let's navigate through the news DTO object in order to access the news property. We can make a link projection to generate a list of news item in order to return the list of news. So the service is ready. So let's register it with the dependency injection container. For that, I open the program.cs file and use the builder object on the services property, I invoke the add scoped method. The first parameter is the interface I want to register, and the second is the implementation I want to receive. So we're done with the service. Let's create the user interface. The index page is the home page of the application. So let's clean it up. I remove the pages I wanted. I also take the chance to clean up those shared components that we won't use here. So let's simplify the main layout component, which is a template for all the pages. Let's go back to the index page. Then in the code, I declare a property, which is a list of news. So this property will be used to store the news. Next, I declare another property that will be used to display any error message when loading data. To retrieve the data, we need the news service, which is already registered with the dependency injection container. I use the inject directive. The first parameter is the service I want, and the second is the name of the variable that will hold the instance that will be provided. We can now load the news. In the life cycle of a Blazor component, the best place for this is in the method on initialize. 
I declare a try catch block. In the try block, I invoke the get news method on the news service. If an error occurs, I assign the error message to the error variable in order to display it on the screen. That's all for the C-sharp code. Now we are going to write the code that will be used to display the list of news. The first thing we need to do is to check if we don't have any news. We display a message to the user telling him that the news is being loaded. If we have data, we can display it. So we will browse through the list of news and display them on the cart. The first element is the image of the news. Then in the body of the cart, we display the headline. And finally, we display the body of the news. To wrap up the UI, I'm going to add the block that displays an error if there is one. Let's execute the code to see if it works. You can see the loading message when we have no news yet. When we have some news, you can see them on the screen. The UI is not very polished, but the goal was to demonstrate using the HTTP clients. That's all for this video. If it was useful to you, feel free to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for future videos. Thanks for watching, see you soon.